Welcome back. This is uh, Three Tall. We are listening to very special people that do very special uh, kind of work. It's not the regular kind of work. It's mm -hmm. not the regular kind of job you go looking for. How do you say this is a calling, it's a vocation. It is something very special. And they're telling us how they have taken care of hundreds and hundreds of children that they don't even know where they came from, they don't know any family, and they're raising them, and the things that these children go through, they go through a lot of pain, but these wonderful women are there for them and loving them, and they have very special, uh, very special hearts. So welcome back, and Kabula uh, Twende break, we are talking to Mary here, and Nikamuliza Kasema Alipoteza Watoto Wake Wawiri, Sasa Sijui, what were the circumstances? Nini Rifanika? Okay, Toto Akwanza Likufa 2014. Uh, nidi Nidi Mpata Nikakana eh, for two weeks. Hmm. Arafu and Nikaona Hui Mutoto Nanala Sana. Mm -hmm. Nasika Waido Nikampereka Ko Hospital Ya Serekari. Wakaniambia hmm. Nikawaida. Mtoto mdogo kurana. Lakini mimi ni nawambia si kawaida. Sababu yeah. hui mtoto hata ukimuamusha hamuki kunyonya. Uh. So mimi nika, nika insist ya kwamba lazima waniangaridia mtoto. Yeah. Ni nini naendelea. Yeah. Wakaniambia it is normal. Uh -huh. uh, nikaenda, nikaenda mara ya pili. Wakaniambia the same thing. E, hmm. nikaona hapana sasa wacha na muangalia hawa wa, wana wana muangalia wa, ana, ana mpima, ana, ananiambia huyu mtoto akwa sawa okay mimi nikaona wacha nimpeleke huyu mtoto wangu kwa nini private hospital yeah. at least nisikie mm -hmm. nikaenda kwa ile house nilienda huyo <laughs> daktari aliniuliza wewe ni wazimu wa wow. Unapereka mtoto na ni mtoto mdogo hmm. kwa hosi marambiri. Ukiambiwa hmm. akonomo na yu nakubali ya ikonomo. Nika wow. muambia nilikubali ni kwa sababu najua yeah. daktari ya amekuambia. amekuambia kwa hivyo yeah. akora. Akora ita akaniambia aka saa hii ni mekutuma uende upewe barua umpereke vika. Hmm. Na akaniambia ni mekuambia uende upewe barua kwenye uliko natibiwa. Mm -hmm. mtoto. Okay. Mimi nikaenda uh, nikaenda hosi ilikuwa on Sunday. Yeah. Nikawaambia ni maambio munipatie barua ni mpeleke Livaro mpeleke huyu mtoto. Yeah, dika. dika. Mm -hmm. Madam mwenye nilikupata akaniambia hapana hatukupatii Livaro na nilikuwa nimeambiwa ni tishi ambulance. Mm -hmm. Akaniambia Kwa mtoto ni mgonjwa sana. Mtoto ni mgonjwa sana. Ah yeah. uh, Nika, nika, ni, ni, ni kambiwa uende uitishiwe ambulance asimalise that minute kama hajafika ah. hajafika kenye kana, uh, dika. Dika. nikaenda nika wambia wakaniambia wakaniambia hakuna haja ya referral to this is sunny and think walikuwa na ni confuse ah. sababu walikuwa na jua wako na, na makosa so walikuwa na jaribu kuficha ah. uh, mimi ni, ni ni akaniambia wewe wacha ni kuandikie card wewe uwe wende uh -huh. sababu sasa hapo nimekaa kama nimechagadikiwa mimi nilitoka mzee wangu alikuwa chachi nikampigia nikamwambia sasa uh -huh. kimeumana wewe uh -huh. kuja twende uh -huh. twende twende dika uh -huh. akakuja hata si kurudi kwa nyumba tukapatana tukaenda uh -huh. nikiwa kwa jia kuna kitu inaniambia wewe nyonyesha mtoto Hmm. Alafu kitu ingine inaniambia hata. Hmm. Alafu hiyo barabara sa hiyo ingo imeeko arami. So kulikuwa na fumbi mingi. So yeah. naona kama nitamfunua nita apate fumbi. Yeah. Nikasema hata tukifika jia ya kuenda dhika. Sababu yeah. atisti ikona arami. Yeah. Nitamuhonyesha. Yeah. Kufika, kufika huko. Na sikia kitu ingine inaniambia pana. Mtoto wa merala wa yafunika mtoto. Yeah. Mimi tukaenda, tukafika dhika. Kufika dhika nikamwambia wewe enda upange laini na mimi nikae chini nionyeshe mtoto. Yeah. Uh, akaenda akapika step tatu hivyo, mimi nikafungua mtoto nikaona mtoto amefanya hivi. 
nikashtuka nikamwambia kuja akakuja nikamwambia hai venye huyu mtoto amelia nikama hayu hayuko wow. akaniambia we wacha jokes nikamwambia hivyo ndivyo ilivyo mm. haya tukatoka tukatoka nje ya, ya, ya gate sasa ya hosi tukaenda mahali tukakaa chini tukaangalia mtoto ha. na tukapata mtoto hayuko eh. so amekufa within barabara wow just like that yeah wow wow ako kama 2 weeks old eh alikuwa 2 weeks old ha. so mimi boy or a girl alikuwa boy ha. alikuwa anaitwa Victor wow ah uh, so nika tukajadiliana hapo tukasema sababu watu na pesa tusiingishe huyu mtoto hosi sababu hiyo itakuwa tena ni gharama nyingine tukaambiana tujikaze tupeleke mtoto home <laughs> saa hiyo di pastor kuri alikuwa alikuwa chat na walikuwa wameplan si hiyo siku ndio wanakuja kuona mtoto walikuwa wamejipaka hiyo siku ndio wanakuja kuona mtoto yeah so uh, wakatupigia simu tukiwa dhika Ah, uh, mwanangu akamwambia hata tunataka kurudi. Akamuuliza mtoto anatibiwa? Akamwambia it's a wrong story. Na, na akakata simu. Uh, Haya tu, uh, tena akampigia akamwambia tukutane kwa nyumba. Uh, so sisi tu, tukarudi. Tukiwa kwa gari <laughs> naenda kukaa kama ninataka kuri, kusema duru ananiambia we. Na sio tumebeba nini kwa mate? <laughs> Unadia bia we tulia. Sasa mnarudi nyumbani. Eh tunarudi nyumbani sasa tumesema hakuna kuingia hosini turudi nyumbani twende tutayarishe mambo na barrio tuzike mtoto. Ah yeah yeah. Okay. Mimi nafika mahali na mwambia God. Mimi nitapayuka ananiambia we tulia. Sasa mko kwa matatu. Eh na umebeba mtoto nime... hapa ukijua mimi. Yeah, sasa ni yeye amebeba. Sasa mimi nime nimeisha nguvu. Yeye yeah. yeah, ni yeye amebeba, mimi wow, nimebeba wow, tu bag. Wow. Hmm. Haya, vile tulifika kambi Juja Farm sasa. Juja Farm. Ah. Nikamwambia huku sababu watu wengi hawakuniacha na mtoto, I think tu hatutapitia ya katikati, tupite ya chini. Sasa ni kama saa ngapi? Ni saa sita. Ah, okay. Ni saa sita mchana. Mhm sababu watu wataenda wakiniuliza na vile tu tulishuka gari tukapatana na mama tulikuwa tunashiriki na yeye kanisa ingine oh, ilikuwa inaitwa eh, sasa <laughs> wale walikuwa natorokea sasa umewakuta eh so wini akaniambia <laughs> mama tere sasa ulipata mtoto nikamwambia nilipata mtoto ni nani nikamwambia ni kijana wacha ni muone akamfungua na mimi nika smile <laughs> <laughs> sasa hiyo ninafikiria nina kai akijua ni nini nimebeba <laughs> akaniambia eh na ni mlembo wacha akue nikamwambia asante eh. sasa nikamwambia wacha tutorokee huku chini sababu watu wataenda wakiniuli eh. wakiniuliza so wow. mi, sisi kufika kufika uh, kwa nyumba tulikuta akina pasta wako huko wamepanga magari huko akina baba Brian hmm. sasa hapo ndio nilipa yuka sasa hmm. nikaona sasa walikuwa wakuja waone mtoto na mtoto mm. haiko. Mambo imebadilika. Sasa hapo ndipo nilipiga duru akasema he huku siku nzuri. Uh. Tukaingia kwa nyumba. Uh, within, I think two hours walikuwa wamepanga mambo ya madhisi na mtoto akazikwa the following day. Uh. Yeah. Wa, duru tall mambo yeah. na kuwa ni mazito. Tarudi tuambie huyo mwingine pia kwa sababu Tulisema wa yale mambo una, ulipitia mm. kuna mwingine anapitia leo yeah. na unamtia nguvu yeah. na unampa nguvu ya kuendelea. Mm. Mary, how did you find yourself uh, with the children ministry and all that is it bringing up is it something God put in you how did you find yourself there? It was put uh, in me by God but through the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it started long ago. Uh-huh. Because I grew in uh, this functional family. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time uh, my mother and my father they disagreed and my mother could run away uh-huh. and we were left alone. Okay. And my father used to work in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. So most of the time uh, I was left when I was very young mm. to to care for the other children. We were six of us. 
So your mother has run away. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So sometimes my father could go for her and come, then they disagree, then she runs away, mm. and that was the trade until. Were you the first one? Yes. Okay. So until you came to a time, they separated totally. Oh, how old were you then? Uh, they separated when I, I was as big as I am. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they kept on disagreeing mm -hmm. all through. Okay. Uh, because I'm told when even when I was some few months old, mm -hmm. I was left with my father, and my uncle is the one who mm -hmm. who who took care of me. Wow. So uh, many times I was left with my brothers mm -hmm. and my sisters to take care of them, mm -hmm. because my father worked at Nairobi. So I took the role of a of a mother to them. Okay. And I remember there are times even. We didn't have food, mm. and because uh, whenever my mother was there, she showed us to go to church. Mm -hmm. We used to then to fellowship with full gospel church, mm -hmm. and I remember when we were alone one time. There is this man uh, who used to be in our church. He used to preach in our church. I never knew anything about else about him. Yeah. But one time he came and found us. It was raining heavily, and we were all alone. And we didn't, didn't have food. At all, at all. At all, at all. Yeah. And he came and, oh, 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 uh, what are you eating? And we have nothing. Mm -hmm. And he took me and to a shop which was just nearby and bought us food. Wow. And to, to us, the Where children. Where is your father? He was in Nairobi. Oh. My mother had run away. <laughs> wow. So uh, for us, he became a hero. Actually, to this day, <laughs> even if he's we we'll be watching this. Uh -huh. uh, he used to be called Dongwa Moses. Okay. He came and made such a great impact by buying us food that day, such that even today we were young. I was in grade five, mm -hmm. and he made such a great impact. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in such a scenario, uh, and mm. when I was done with my high school, yeah. I got uh, like uh, a casual work. Mm -hmm. with a children's home. Okay. I never planned to be in a children's home because also as I was growing up, I wondered how people work with children. To yeah. me, it was such a, such a challenge. How can, how, how can adults work with children? Yeah. And I remember in our church, uh, the, those Sunday school teachers, they could encourage me, you, 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 can, you can work with children. Come and we cook mandazis for the children. And it's like, mm -hmm. that is something that is very big. Yeah. Even I can't achieve that. Yeah. So... When I was employed there at uh, the children's home, mm -hmm. and I w that was in my early 20s, mm -hmm. uh, there was this lady, the owner of the home. Mm -hmm. She was a black American. Okay. And <laughs> she, she used not to be a very good person. She <laughs> had us <asked> us a lot. <laughs> And okay. what was your duties? Or my what? duty was to cook for the children <laughs> and to ensure they get quality <laughs> meals. Okay. <laughs> yes, but what used to happen, we lived with, with her. The children, they had their separate houses. Yeah. But myself, because I was the one preparing the meals, we used to live with her yeah. in the same house. Oh. And um, there are times she used to, to be diabetic and there are times she used to, to break down. Mm. And I was the only one there, and sometimes I could look at her and see the, the, her children are not around. Yeah. If it were my mother, what could I have done, even if she's not that friendly? Yeah. And I could go prepare her breakfast, clean her room, and she used to love that, I knew, because she used to tell me, you are the only human being in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and <Okay. laughs> uh, one time she was leaving to go back to the U.S., Mm -hmm. and, and I think that was my, my turnaround or my entry to, into missions, serving mm -hmm. the children. Yeah. I don't know what she saw in me because uh, even if I worked with children, I didn't have that understanding of, of such a great interest. Or mm -hmm. I never saw myself that one day I can work with the children yeah. again. Mm -hmm. And she just hugged me. And from there she talked to my ears. She was a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. And she told me, never ever leave children. And wow. that's all she said. Wow. And that was done, and that was, that was the, time, the last time we worked with her. Mm -hmm. Because I had to go to college, and I went yeah. to college. Mm -hmm. And 
from there I found myself go going for voluntary work in, in institutions where there are children and the passion grew. Mm -hmm. I, could, I remember many children, I went to, to ensure that they, they are fed, mm -hmm. they are taken to the hospital, those who are abused, I ensure they are taken to the hospital. I followed yeah. up on their cases. Yeah. Like I remember there was a time I had two girls. Mm. Actually there were three, but I dealt first with the two. Yeah. And as the institution where I worked, uh, they used to, to come feed and then yeah. go back to their schools. But the, okay. because they were uh, lower primary, then they could be left there, they could do games, talk, mm -hmm. until it was four to go back home. Okay. And the, the three girls started talking, and they were saying, it's you. Uh -huh. And we were seated with another lady we worked with, and the other one said, it's you. So they argued, it's you, it's you. And mm -hmm. as we were talking, we just uh, uh, signaled each other, let's hear what is happening. And <laughs> okay. it's like, it's you, it's you. And um, we, we, we came down and asked them, well, what is it? It's like you're fighting, what is it? Mm -hmm. And it's it's Shiro. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, what what about Shiro? I, it, it's you, and it it continued, and it's like uh -huh. we came to realize mm -hmm. that the two the two girls who are siblings, uh -huh. uh, their mother used to give them out to men oh. uh, for sex, so that they may buy wow. a uga for chapati. Wow. And. Oh, how was, old were they this time? Uh, uh, well, the smaller one was around five, the older one was around seven. Wow. And wow. they told, told us that uh, the mother, whatever they the, the man, the, the, those who came, they, mm -hmm. because they, she used to close them mm -hmm. in the same house with the men. Wow. Uh, whatever they tell you, just do it. I'll, I'll buy you, i got to buy wow. uh, to cook for you chapatis. Is the mother giving her The own children guys? to. To, wow. to, to men, huh. and to me, I felt this, this can't happen, yeah. <laughs> this can't happen. Yeah. And I took the children, I knew the, the uncle, and I took them to the uncle, and the uncle said, no, my mother is, uh, my sister is responsible. Wow. Let her take her, uh, her own cross. Mm. We went, uh, it was a, a long journey yeah. until I ended up with the children in my, my house. In your house, wow. And I stayed with them, and it's like, how will I handle this? Wow. I, I said, I don't want to get into problems. Let me set them to achieve. I used, mm -hmm. By then, I used to live in UTI, Dika. Let, them, let me set them to the chief. There is a chief yeah. around there. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the chief will take over the story. Yeah. And they went and found uh, the chief. And the chief had the story. And it was too much also for him. Wow. And he told them, uh, go and, and tell the one who has sent you here to come. And they mm -hmm. went and he did it. He really encouraged me and told me, go to the children's office with these children. Mm. And I went. When I went to the children's office, I thought, I work with this, organi this organization, and it supports children. Let me go to the office and say the story. Mm. And when I went there, the, the leader, who was so, so passionate, I think she's still doing the same. Mm. She's Wairimu Mongai from Wemisdika. Yeah. Uh, she said, this can't happen. <laughs> yeah. This can't happen. And the thing went all over. He, mm. She called media, she called everybody, and everybody was to work for those children. Wow. And eventually the children were saved in a children's home. Mm. And now they are adults. Mm. And also the other one, the other girl who used to be in, the sto in that talk, and mm. she was left, but she was left with the father. Mm -hmm. And when she was left with the father, uh, the father used to molest the child. Wow. And where I worked, we had the freedom. You can take the children, clean them, feed them, whatever, ensure they are safe. So we used to warm water and clean them. So it was my turn to go and clean the children. And when I, I wiped the child uh, between the feet and it's like she was feeling pain and it's like, mm -hmm. what's wrong? Mm -hmm. You don't want me to, uh, to <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, no. What is it? Nothing. Then let me clean you. Mm. And I, f I understood this child was in pain. Mm. And it's like... And the trauma. Yeah, a mm. lot of it. And I said, are you, are you sick? Yes, what is it? Nikona to Vidoda, who called private parts. Mm. And something told me this is uh, an STI. Mm. And, but the child could not live here. Wow. So I took the child to the Dika General Hospital. Mm. And she was treated of STIs. Wow. 
but I had How this. How old is the child now? She was around five. Five years? Five years. Whoa. So I was told by the nurse who was there to follow up and know who, who, who has done this to this child. Hmm. And we tried to, to negotiate with the child and she could not. Wow. Uh, but one time, uh, the child uh, one time went to a police station mm -hmm. and reported the dad. Wow. And the reason she reported the dad is because the dad used to, the, she, uh, it's like he, she used to sell sex to him okay. and because she, he was supposed to give the child pesos and mandazi. Wow. So this time, she, uh, the man had sex with a girl, but he, he never gave the money. Oh. So the child knew. So she's going because of the money. <laughs> the money. She wow. never, uh, the father refused to, to pay. Wow, wow. And wow. it's like, it was a hard case, and the child uh, uh, later, and we talked to her, and she told us about the father. And when I called the father, and the father, it's like, no, it's me, I'm, I'm innocent. But there wow. was, I, I couldn't prove anything more yeah. be, beyond that. But the best thing, the child was taken by a, an organization in Dika, mm -hmm. and she, she went to live with the aunt. Wow. So there are so many stories. So those wow. pro, uh, provoked me into serving the children. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the first case of the two girls, yeah. uh, the story was all over, and I knew there are people that would come for me. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want them. So they, they used to come, yeah, have you heard? Wow. <laughs> what is in the news? That the two girls, and it's like, oh, it has happened. Because mm -hmm. I, I was so fearful. Yeah. I don't want those people mm -hmm. to know that I was involved. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who came to tell me. But the two girls, they had a, 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 their, their brother. Mm -hmm. The mother used to go for drinking spree mm -hmm. and go with the smaller child carrying him. Mm -hmm. And after the story came out, she was taken into the police station, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I felt this is not good for the child to be in the police station. Mm -hmm. So I worked with the organization that I worked with, yeah. and I was called to go mm -hmm. and talk to the mother. Wow. And see whether she will allow me to get the child. Yeah. And I got the child. Mm -hmm. And the child, we took him to the same home where mm -hmm. the, the sisters were. Mm -hmm. And the, there was a policy in that home before the child gets in, the child sh should be taken to the hospital. Yeah. So when the child was taken to the hospital, the boy mm -hmm. used to, to bite the nurses. Okay. Whenever they, they, they tried to remove his pants, the boy could He's bite. biting the nurses. Yes, the nurses. Yeah. And it's like, what is it? There must be a problem here. Mm -hmm. And they tried, struggled, and it's like it was not possible. And after they are... They are such, they thought, this is a, 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 an abuse case. Take mm -hmm. this child to Nairobi women, and he was t taken there. Mm -hmm. So what uh, came out is that the boy used to be, be sodomized by the men who used to drink, drink with, yeah. with the mother. Oh, wow. So it took a long journey for the boy to heal. Yeah. It was such a long journey. Wow. So those are some of the things that made me feel... <laughs> I used you to, want to help? <laughs> I used to feel as if I... <laughs> Yeah. I'm on fire. I yeah. need this child to be safe. Mm. <laughs> and that's how it started. Wow. Mm. Wow. Would you say now you are fulfilled, you have been, you have made impact, and thank you for sharing that, because this is what children go through. Yeah. When children that don't have any other advocate, mm. we are the people, I mean, people like you, mm. and, and them who can only advocate and help these children. So, you know, would you say you, have, you feel like you have made some good impact in you know, working with Happy Life and so many other children in helping and rescuing those kind of children? Yeah, I have made an impact. <laughs> okay. And one thing I would like to say, mm -hmm. I hear people come, uh, get out of their jobs to go and do the, what they love. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing God has done for me, mm -hmm. I, I've never gone to a place to do go something I love. Wow. Because God placed me exactly where I'm supposed to be. Not because so, <laughs> you chose. <laughs> no, I, I found myself where God yeah. wanted to me, and what, whenever I do anything, I'm so satisfied. Hmm. Whenever I help children, it comes from me. I feel like whenever I see a child in need, yeah. I just feel I'm the person who should do it. Yeah. Let me go. Let, yeah. me, let me talk on behalf of this child. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm the advocate for this child. Mm -hmm. If I don't, who will? That's and I, I will be the first one to step ahead and, <laughs> and talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I feel whatever I do, I'm so, so, so fulfilled. And over the years, and that is something that I thank God for, yeah. that other people are looking for their purpose, mm -hmm. but already I'm in my purpose. Wow. So I'm so, so grateful to God. I have seen mm -hmm. many yeah. kids, their lives transform, mm -hmm. and they are happy, they, are, they have a future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, both in happy life and outside there. Yeah. Uh, whenever, like in happy life, when I see those children, like I found when they were very small, mm -hmm. and now they are grown men. They yeah. are actually, the, some are taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> some are taller than me, and yeah. it's like, teacher, maybe you, you're becoming short. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, yeah. well, mm -hmm. don't play about with me, I'm your mother. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I feel so, so fulfilled yeah. and mm -hmm. to see there are those who I had a dream. Yeah. Where when I got to Happy Life, like, there is this boy who used to be big and when I taught, because I started, well, I did the home and the other school, mm -hmm. uh, when I started teaching this boy and it's like, hey, this boy, when he gets to grade four, mm -hmm. he will be a man mm -hmm. and he will be discouraged. Yeah. From go continuing with the yeah. education. So tall. Yes, and mm. <laughs> I know I did a drastic thing. Yeah. I went to each and every child and I told them, You work hard. I know I'll take you to grade three. <laughs> you work hard. I'll take you to grade two. You work hard. I'll take you to grade one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And because, especially for that boy, he, he provoked me or he made me feel that I don't want want to see this boy lose his life. Yeah. So uh, from the from the nursery section oh. all the way to grade three. Wow. And hmm. uh, I used to remind him because he's a tall a tall man. <laughs> I used to remind him. Remember, even if you, you get as tall as what, you are still a child. Yeah. <laughs> and I ensured that I spoke that in his ears. Mm -hmm. But uh, my intention was to ensure that he doesn't grow really and feel that I'm the, the oldest here in school yeah. and leave school. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him graduate from high school, mm -hmm. that was my greatest achievement <laughs> ever. <laughs> that was a project God helped me carry to the yeah. end. And now I knew when he's, he's in college, he's mm -hmm. just like any other person. Older people are going back to school. Yeah. It's not a big issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, so happy to see him also doing the training he's undergoing. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see what will become of him. Wow. Yeah. Hey, those are successful, very yeah. successful stories. Yeah. Great impact, changing mm -hmm. lives. And I believe that is very fulfilling. Yeah, that is. is more than a, <clears throat> somebody giving you 10 million. Yeah. It is very, very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Before we come back to, to, to the other Mary Magdalene, what, what are you thinking about when you hear these things, and all that, what do you say about mistreating children and people who actually mistreat children? What would you say to the people? Um, for me, personally, I feel like if I get a chance, I get the mother or the person who is mistreating that person, that child, I can discipline him or her totally <laughs> because I feel so bad. Uh -huh. I feel so bad because we had a boy who came. We were just hanging out. It was a sunny day with Mary outside there. Mm -hmm. And we were brought up a young boy. And that boy, he came when he was so tortured, mm -hmm. physically and mentally. Wow. And he came and we tell him, I had my legs like this. And I told him, sit here on my legs mm -hmm. so that you can give me more stories. Yeah. And he talked and he, he talked and talked and I told Mary, oh my God, I feel like crying here. Yeah. And then mm. Mary told me, no, 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 mm. you have to do something for this boy. Yeah. I felt like if I can get the chance to get the mother or the father who did that to that boy, wow. I could discipline him. But how old was the boy? He was allowed four, four, four five. five. Uh -huh. And he had all his body, moods, mm. moods, mouth. Wow. Or you could feel, you he couldn't. He was beaten and mistreated yeah. and... Wow. It's that like was a bad with a hot objects. Wow. And mouth, it's like there were, was a lot and, of and bites, bites, bites all over the body. Oh, wow. So the moment I pulled the t-shirt like this and I said, oh God. Wow. And I said, oh my God, oh my God, wow. help us. Yeah. I felt so bad. Mm -hmm. But we loved that boy. Yeah. And he came, he, we, we, 
we made sure that the boy is healed mentally and yeah. so loved. Love healed everything. Yeah. So to me, that was my work. Mary used to tell me, you remember by your son? <laughs> How is he? Mm -hmm. Your son is doing well? Mm -hmm. You can see the change. Wow. Yeah. Love heals everything. Yeah. Yeah, love so you everything. people love these children until you see the change, which yes. is not easy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the boy is still around? or he? Yeah, the boy is still around. He's so cool. He's mm -hmm. so good. Uh, he's, he's now all in class? In grade five. Grade five. Yes. And he's now stable? Very stable. Wow. Very good. Wow. And we were saying just another day, he's just a cool guy. <laughs> he's just a cool guy. Wow. He wow. listens and then he come, he tell you, Mom, you have to do this. Mm. He did this to me. Wow. Listen to me, Mom, he did this to me. Wow. At that time when he came, he, could li he couldn't listen to anyone. Mm -hmm. But now he come and tells you this. You, you talk with him very well, mm. and he's just a cool guy. Mm. A cool guy to wow. everyone. From all the trouble he went through. Yeah. Wow, thank you. That is so much. I mean, you do, you're doing so much for these children. Hi, Mary, Kareko. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sasa, hey, umezika mtoto. Umezika hmm? mtoto. Na mambo ikaenda hivu. Na nikarudi ikasi. Um, wakati nirudi kasi uh -huh. immediately after one month uh -huh. kuna mtoto alikufa happy life uh -huh. that is Veronica alikuwa yeah. alikuwa uh -huh. na hiyo ikanikumbusha mtoto wangu yeah. na nikalia sana uh -huh. <sighs> niliambiwa niongee nikashindwa nikajiuliza mtu anaongea anga haji yeah. uh -huh. Uyo yeah. alikuwa mtoto mkuu kama nakana kwa nyumba yako ama alikuwa ah, alikuwa kwa nyumba nyingine okay kama how old alikuwa only 8 8, yeah. eight yeah. months 8 years, eight years. Yeah. mtoto mkubwa yeah. mtoto mkubwa wow. a big girl oh yeah. wow haka haka umegojeka kwa muda mrefu mm. mm. wow ah yeah. uh -huh. kufa okay ah uh, so on 20 2017 nikapata mimi nyingine Mm -hmm. na nilikuwa na hope mingi sana na huyu mtoto. Mm -hmm. Ah, nilikuwa Mary alikuwa ananiambia huyu anaitwa Karaja. <laughs> huyu ni Karaja umebeba mm -hmm. na tukafurahia sana sababu yeah. tulikuwa tunaomba na wao. Yeah. So, na wakakuwa wananiencourage ya kwamba eh, mambo itakuwa sawa. Ah, yeah. uh, nikasukumana Actually, mm. the end of Saturday. Yeah. When does off Saturday? Nika end a labor. Kwa hivyo oh. nili work throughout. Yeah. Niko ana ball. Mm. Ni, wakati umefika. Ni, oh, eh, wakati umefika, mimi nimeacha, nimepanga store yangu, mm. <laughs> nimefanya kazi zangu zote, nika enda. So, jioni nikasikia apana, ninaenda hosi. Mm. Ah. Ni mume wangu alikuwa alikuwa amefika saa hiyo nikamwambia he na umekuja time nzuri nasikia kama tutaenda safari mahali yeah. akaniuliza wapi na venye nimechoka nikamwambia tunataka kukupeleka out yeah. <laughs> nikamwambia akaniambia mimi nataka chapati yeah. ikamwambia ni sawa nitakupikia chapo lakini kamra umalize kukula najua tutakuwa tumeanza safari <laughs> nikampikia chapo hey, utapika <laughs> nitapika <laughs> <laughs> nikamwambia na nikamwekea haraka na nikamwambia sasa mm. itabidi uharakishe uh -huh. sababu vile nasikia uh, time yangu imefika hey. akaniambia you are not serious mm. na kama sige kuja ungefanya nini ningejipeleka sasa <laughs> <laughs> hey. so farm naenda wapi hapo juja farm kuna hey, hospital kuna hosi oh, hapo sawa. Hey. okay haya vile ni mimi nilimaliza kwa kupika nilimsafu nikaingia kwa bafu okay nikifika kwa bafu nikasikia uchungu sasa imezidi nikajimwagia maji na nikajipanguza na nikatoka nikamwambia we naona <laughs> <laughs> kama kutaharibikia tu tukiwa hapa tunasengenga hapa uh -huh. nikaenda nikaingisha fitu zangu na nikaenda hosi so uh -huh. hiyo ilikuwa saa tatu usiku oh ni usiku eh sasa ni usiku saa tatu usiku uh -huh. tukaenda hosi tukaka tukaka ah nikaambiwa mado mtoto hayuko ha karibu kufika ikafika mahali daktari akaniambia wewe enda nje enda usunguke na huko 
Mm. Time yako haijafika nikamwambia stoki hapa sababu mimi na feel niko karibu kupata mtoto. Akaambia mzee wangu kwasa wewe enda home. Eh, hey, <laughs> 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 na akatoka. Yeah. Na akatoka. Aka, aka, akaambiwa wewe nitapata mtoto huko saa 10. Aha. Sasa tumekaa hapo mpaka saa saa tano na nusu nikamwambia hapana usiende bali. Mm. <laughs> Akaenda akazuruta surula hapo. Mm. Hey, akaona nimekaa dhati mimi nitaanza kwenda huko. Mimi mm. saa hiyo nimeingia na nimepata mtoto. Nika, nika chukua simu yangu haraka nikampia rudi nimeshapata mtoto na okay. huyu mtoto ni kijana. Mm. Akarudi. So nasikia daktari wakiambiana ni kama mtoto wa yuko. <laughs> Nikamwambia niambieni ukweli. Wacheni kuficha niambieni ukweli. Ni nini naendelea? Wakaniambia tulia. Nikamwambia hapana nataka kujua ni nini naendelea. Mm. wakaenda na mtoto. Nikamwambia msiende na mtoto wangu mahali. Najua daktari kwa muda chenjia na mtoto. <laughs> So mnataka mnataka mnichenjie mtoto. Ya yeah, baada ya merudi sasa. Eh mtoto. amerudi Aha. lakini hajaingia bado saa hii tunaongea okay. hii maneno yote. Aha. Ah nataka kuona Kenya inaendelea. Sasa wakamuinamisha akajaribu kumpiga piga mtoto akapumua na akaenda. Sasa so alipumua nikimwangalia hivi. Wow. Na akaenda. Hey, okay. Sasa bwanangu ameingia. Mm akaambiwa mtoto ameenda. Hmm. Lakini mimi hawakuniambia. Sasa walichukua mtoto wakaingia na yadu mwingine. Lakini mimi ni license danger. Hmm. Haya wakaenda wakaona nice sijui nini nini. Sijui pesa zitolewe, apeleka sijui wapi kuna mahali wanaekanga spirit, hiyo bone sijui inaisha hivyo. Hmm. Sasa hapa hakuna mambo ya bali. Hmm. Wakaenda na wakaona nice na wakuniambia. Yeah. <laughs> akarudi mm. akaniambia sasa mtoto ameaga mimi mm. nilisema dulu mm. nikauliza Mungu kwa nini ulinipea mm. huyu mtoto ni bebe 9 month yeah. na wakati tu nimemzaa mm. amekufa mm-hmm. nikasikia Mungu ameniambia ndani yangu mm. ya kwamba uko na kazi nyingi sana ya kufanya happy life Uh, Nimekupatia hawa watoto wote. Uh, uh, mm. Nikaria sana lakini nikaambia Mungu sasa onipe nguvu uh, niweze kusimama sababu mm. si rahisi. Mm. So oh, akapanga oh, mimi nikaenda kulala. Uh, si wamepanga venye mtoto atazikwa na nini? Uh, uko hosi. Mm. Sasa asubuhi mimi nime Sasa umelala huko mtaka. Eh nime nimerana huko hosi. Eh. Yeah. Sasa hata siku lala ni kukaa huko uki ukigojea. Ne uta yeah. u, itaenda aje. Mm. Sasa lakini Mungu ameniogeresha direct uko mm. na kasi mingi sana ya kufanya happy life. Eh. Yeah. Huu sio mwisho wako. Nisaidie watoto wale. Nisaidie watoto. Uh-huh. So wakati nilika hapo ah uh, mzee wangu akakuja asubuhi akaniambia sasa nataka twende nyumbani. Nikamuuliza tunaenda nyumbani yako wapi mtoto? Mm. Akaniambia hapana mtoto tuliplan na huyo mtoto sasa mambo yake ishai. Wow. Isha nikawauliza muhamko Silas mnafanya hivyo na muwezi niletea mtoto kwanza nione mtoto wangu hata uh, kama ni huyo amekufa mgeniletea at least ni hold mtoto yeah kaniambia hiyo imeisha hivyo mm. so hiyo ili ni encourage sana mm. kupenda wale watoto wa happy life na kujua ya kwamba ah mm. uh, i have to give hope to yeah. these children yeah, yeah. yeah. Sasa yule ni mtoto wa pili. Sasa huyo ni mtoto wa pili. Amenda. Amenda hivyo. Wow. Na sasa hiyo ndio ilikuja tuka tukanetana tu mpaka mmm aka dis familia ikawa sasa. Eh ika ika mambo haiende vizuri. Yeah. Ah. Wa, hii ni kwa mwaka gani? 2017. 2017. 2017. Okay. Well, hii program inaitwa Through It All kwa sababu watu hupitia mambo mazito. 
ngumu shida matatizo yanaweza kuwa ni mengi lakini Mungu anapeana neema anapeana ushindi na ile ulipitia 2017 kuna mwingine amepitia leo ama jana na mambo yanakuwa ni mazito na mwingine nasikia kama hakuna matumaini lakini tunataka kukuambia kwamba there is hope even if you may go through whatever you go through ndio Daudi akasema even if i go through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil and the good thing is that there is life after challenge after pain after all that you go through there is life na tumeongea na hawa mama ambao wameshughulika kwa sababu ya watoto hawajui watoto ambao wanakuja hawajui majina yao wanawalea wanawapenda kuwapeleka hospitali usiku na mchana na wao pia wanapitia changamoto zao za kimaisha lakini wanaamua ya kwamba instead of being bitter they will help other children kwa sababu mm-hmm. watu wengine wakipitia mambo mazito what they do ni kwamba wanakuwa bitter na hawataki kuona mtu ama kusaidia mtu mwingine mm-hmm. but then they decided even if we are going through these problems we will not help because we don't have a problem they have their own personal problem they have their own personal challenges but they still continue to help these wonderful children mm-hmm. well muda wetu umesonga sana nitawapatia kila mtu dakika moja atupatie final word na ile wameona katika ile 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 shule eh, wamesoma mambo mengi mm-hmm. maybe kila mtu atupatie ile lesson amesoma na kile angetaka kuambia wale wote ambao wanatusikiliza uh, in this program ya through it all wacha tuanze na na Magdalene hapa okay uh, for me and the journey that I've walked at happy life i'm really grateful to god for the good work that i have seen and for his faithfulness Uh, for the side of the children we you viewers you people who are outside there it's good to witness what god is doing to us mm-hmm. his happy life because i know god is there and he has done big big things for us mm-hmm. and for for everyone and for our directors and our bosses we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be there and for the give, for the good work and for the good progress that god has given you I have seen big things I have seen changes I have seen a lot I personally have learned a lot mm-hmm. I came there when I was 20 years old now I'm that one years old I'm growing still young so I thank <laughs> God I'm still growing young as I'm there uh-huh. and I've seen God Amen. and I thank God for this far Wow yeah Thank you thank you Magdalene <laughs> for serving those children and being there for them yeah. Mary yeah. Nana la mwisho Um mimi kwangu naweza sema ya kwamba ninafurahia kukaa na hawa watoto kuwapenda na kubadilisha nia zao ya kwamba kuna maisha ingine inakuja baada ya hii mm-hmm. na ni me experience ya kwamba hawa watoto wenye unawapenda ndivyo mnakuwa connected na wao mm-hmm. so ni vizuri sana ya kwamba wakati mnakaribiana na hawa watoto mnakuwa ni, ni kama uh, wewe ni mzazi wa watoto hao kuzaa mm-hmm. na kuwaonyesha njia mm-hmm. ili hata wakikuwa wakipata adoption mm-hmm. tunafurahia sana ni kwa sababu tunajua kwamba huyu mtoto hajaenda kuteseka mm-hmm. na Mungu huwa anatuma ana, anatuma watu ambao ni matajiri sana kukuja kuchukua hao watoto so tunajua ya kwamba huyo mtoto hata akitoka haki, hapira ifa ataenda kuteseka mm-hmm. na bado tunajua ya kwamba wale wako inje wameteseka ya kwamba wakipatikana wakuje happy life mm. wako na better life mm. hata wale wako huko wale wanaendelea na kusoma wako na better life mm. so i cannot regret to be in happy life wow yeah. thank you i cannot regret that's what many says <laughs> yeah. that uh, at happy life they have better life yeah. kwa sababu wamepitia mambo mengi <clears throat> na na vile umesema ni kweli kuna watu wanakuja wana adopt Yeah. wale watoto na kama ungetaka kujua zaidi you can also call that number ujue the process ya adoption na wale wana adopt maybe maybe atatuambia ni wale hawana watoto ama ni akina nani ama ni matajiri <laughs> ama ni nani sababu <laughs> kuna mawazo mengi kuhusu adoption mm-hmm. na pia Mary can also tell us uh, ni jia gani pia mtu anaweza saidia wale watoto hata kama hutakuja ukae na wao 
Kamanini, but there are many ways <coughs> people can also help. May, Mary, your final word and tell us. Okay. Uh, before I talk about uh, issues of adoption, I'd really like to speak to the young people, especially the children who have come from dysfunctional families, and to tell you that there's hope. Mm. Uh, sometimes we as, as children, we may not understand the extent or what is really happening when you see your parents are not together, mm -hmm. but you come out and also don't try to solve their problem. Just mm -hmm. be a kid because that's where you're supposed to be and you, you make it. And maybe later when you are grown up, that's when you'll be able to understand what was really happening mm -hmm. when you saw your parents fight or what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'd like to talk to people outside there to say that um, Whenever you are concerned about what concerns God, you are in God's mission. Mm -hmm. That is, the, uh, we, you can't all of us fit in happy life or work all of us in happy life, but we can work outside there in our small uh, uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. There is a child outside there. Do, do, do you care whenever you pass a child along the way, maybe mm -hmm. that child is traumatized or that child is going through a lot? Spe let's, let the children feel they are in a good place because you are there. Mm. and also feel there are people who care mm. because you are there for a certain, such a purpose. And mm. But all you are looking for somewhere to serve God. God has already placed somebody just next to you mm. uh, who you can serve. And uh, that is not really like you may want to go and serve God there, the, the pulpit, and feel that you are preaching to many people. Mm -hmm. If you transform that life, you transform generations. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm working the Happy Life children, there's something I, I call them, and especially the boys, I call them waze. <laughs> and they're, they're happy whenever I waze, mkwaji. <laughs> and they're happy. Uh -huh. And you may wonder why I call them waze. I don't see them, the kids, I see the husbands, the fathers who are there. And like, uh, I feel like calling out that mm -hmm. because one time they, they come out and they are so, so happy. They don't know, they don't understand why I call them waze. Yeah. I don't see waze, waze, me, I really mean muze mm -hmm. because there's a man I'm bringing up who mm -hmm. become a father, who become a husband. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I look at them and I really wonder, a girl would be very proud to have a boyfriend like this and doesn't know where this child has come from. Yeah. And somebody will brag, this is my husband, and this is my wife, and I don't know where they come from. So whenever I'm looking at them, I'm looking at nimevuka hapa wako, nikona huko bele. That's what is in me, and I call them, and I really call that out in, the, in their lives. Mm. So in Happy Life, we usually give children out for adoption and also for foster care. Mm -hmm. uh, for people to open up their homes uh, and receive these children and serve them. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for somewhere to serve God, that is one area. And also something I would like to say is that those people who adapt is not those people who, who are really rich. Mm -hmm. It's only you have a heart mm -hmm. that you can accommodate somebody else in your house. Yeah. Because there are also there are other rich people there yeah. uh, who, doesn't, who do, do not have the heart for the kids. Mm -hmm. But if you come, you have that heart, you are very rich because you can, you can accommodate somebody in your house and bring that person up and change generations. So uh, we encourage parents to come and adapt. And this is not for Wazungus. Uh, we have seen many Kenyans uh, being interested in adoption. Now, only for those people, you don't adapt because you don't have a child. There are so many people, maybe even some of their children are grown up and they want to have a child. They want yeah. to make a difference mm -hmm. and they come in. So you, you are always welcomed and also to come and support the children. Mm -hmm. And also there are so many children other, in other children's homes. And like right now the government is advocating for children to go for foster care. You can open up a, a, a space for the child to come and be in your house and know how a normal family learns mm -hmm. and grow and learn a lot. Children learn through what they see. So they will learn a lot from you and also you'll be serving God. If you are looking for somewhere to serve God, please don't fight with the, with, with the, with the preachers. Mm -hmm. uh, your ministry is just mm -hmm. next to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, like myself, when I serve those children, you, even you can't intimidate me that you preach there. Mm -hmm. No. 
<laughs> I'm preaching here. Mm. <laughs> yes, it's it's a great ministry and changing people's lives. Uh, I can't wait to see those children that have gone through my hands. Yeah. What they will do in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, I have one who I issue, uh, even I don't know where he is and I find him on television. Mm -hmm. He's making a great impact. Many yeah. television stations, he's working all over. Mm -hmm. And that is a boy who came to me when, when he was traumatized. Mm -hmm. When the mother had died and the, the family threw them, threw them out. Mm -hmm. And now he's such a change agent. Wow. A wow. great change agent. He's shaping destinies. Actually, his world. ministry is called Changing Destinies. Mm -hmm. and, and that he's cross crossing, cross crossing the, 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 the country. Mm. Making an impact, he's all over. Wow. You can't you can't uh, manage that joy. It's too much. I feel <laughs> a great mother. <laughs> yes. I feel a great mother that I, I brought up somebody yeah, right. who is Sarah, changing. Sarah, the mother of nations. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm so so happy. So for whoever oh, you feel that you have a heart to change, to change a, life, a child's life, you you can contact us. I think you'll be given a number there yeah. where you can call and you can be supported. And those people who feel that uh, maybe when I go there and I get a child, people will say about uh, that you have, you have bought a child. People even talk about you even when you have not gotten that child. Mm. So th let the people talk, but pursue what is good. Do the good to these children mm. and you make an impact in the whole world because they will change themselves, they will change others around them, and those others will change others. So it's, more, it's a big network. Mm -hmm. So please come, also support us as Happy Life Children's Home. Uh, our children grow because people come and give them food. Mm -hmm. They come and provide books, uh, even storybooks. When you are outside there, we'd like our children to, 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 to have that culture of reading. So when you're outside there, please, you can contact still that number. Mm -hmm. And if you have a book or many books or your children are done with that, uh, those books, mm -hmm. you can always call because we are in need of that and we want to make great readers and also great readers. Wasomi na viongozi wakubwa. So let's have that opportunity to give them knowledge. You can always visit and bring whatever God has given you. It will make an impact in these children's lives. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Wow, thank yeah. you, thank you, Mary. You can tell she's very passionate because mm -hmm. that's her call and her passion. And uh, we want, we, as we close, uh, like she has said, you can help in many ways, praying for these children, coming to visit with them, bringing them food, clothes, diapers, formula, whatever you can bring. Uh, the, the, the Roisambu campus is at uh, Lumumba Drive, that is next to Park University and next to Jessica Hospital. You can come and visit any time, any day of the week, and be a blessing to them. And the others in Juja Farm, just after Juja Farm Shopping Center, if you ask for Happy Life Children's Home, you'll be able to see that next to Happy Life Christian School, and God will bless you. If you are far and you want to send help, you can use the pay bill on the screen, that is seven triple five one two. That is a pay bill you can use to send any help. And there's no help that is too big or too small. Anything can make a difference. You know, somebody said your change can actually change lives. Mm -hmm. You know, what you consider to be change can change lives. So why don't you send, you know, right now, just send a help, you know, for these children and uh, they can, we can buy some unga, some rice, some, something for them, some formula. You know, you can imagine 60, more than 60 babies that need formula every day, need diapers every day. It's quite a challenge. God can use you to be a blessing. And again, the pay bill is 7 555 account, Happy Life Children's Home. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary number two. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Asante <laughs> Nisana. Only God can reward you for what you have done. For sure, you people. And others, this is a representation of others who are not here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot bring everybody here. But God will remember you all for all that mm -hmm. you have done. You have been such a blessing to these wonderful children. Your crown in heaven will be probably bigger than, than mine, <laughs> much bigger, because 
you have mm-hmm. gone through so much with these children you know at and you believe na sema wao walikuwa mbele watarudi nyuma i think there will be surprises in heaven <laughs> because some of us will be thinking oh i had a big title i was this i was the other and you'll be told ah goja goja why she move about how i ja how i in here so uh, i mean i think there will be surprises in heaven yeah. keep doing that work god will reward you and god will heal your hearts those things you have gone through the pain of losing two babies God will heal. I'm not, I'm sure as you take care of these children God is also healing your hearts. Yeah. And God will continue to bless you. Mungu mm-hmm. awabariki. That's all we have for today. The through it all. Join us next time for such a wonderful program. God bless you and see you then. I'll see you.